Good morning, everyone. My name is uh, Yusuf Alimi. I'm a recent graduate from a recent graduate from St. George's University, and I'm also a clinical anatomy research fellow here at yeah, the Seattle Science Foundation. My topic today is gonna, it will be the radio artery injury with attempted IV categorization in the dorsum of the hand. This was a case report that was published in the Curious Journal uh, this month. And I found it really interesting and I decided I would like to talk about it. So my goals for this uh, presentation is to ensure that we understand uh, the need for proper radio artery pal uh, palpation before attempted cauterization and the need for careful approach during uh, um, a venipuncture or IV axis. So the, I like a little bit of history about the uh, IV axis and venipuncture. So in the, it's been dated back to the uh, Middle Ages and uh, around 1492. That was the first historical uh, documentation of uh, IV therapy. And uh, this picture here is not random. It's, uh, this was the, uh, this is Pope uh, Innocent the Hate. Does anyone know this guy? So he was, he's very, uh, he's well known for his uh, perpetrations of uh, witch hunting. So he was the one that uh, kind of made it very popular to hunt on witches and, you know, burn them and stuff like that back in the Middle Ages. So he was, he's well known for that. So he got sick and he got into a coma. And his uh, physician back then uh, noticed that he had no pulse and stuff. So he wanted to try, uh, you know, a high V access. So he found three young boys and he uh, opened up the veins and just connected it directly uh, via an anastomosis to the pulp. And that was the first pretty much documented case of uh, IV you know, uh, uh, therapy and stuff. So he, although he didn't survive, uh, the boys died, he died as well. And it it's just tells us how important this, uh, this can be in medicine. And since then, it's been a cornerstone of every medical practice, you know, no matter what uh, specialty you get into, you know, in the big hospitals, major hospitals, surgical patients, uh, blood sampling, physical checks, it's, it's been used for a lot of things in, in medicine. So it's, it's of high clinical importance. Unlike every other medical procedure, it has its complications. Um, this includes uh, uh, human-based errors, such as dysfunc uh, dysfunctional, uh, like placing the catheters in the wrong place. You can also have uh, some dysfunction, ca dysfunctional catheters, as well as uh, infection, catheter-associated infections. You can have some uh, phlebitis of the vessels involved, and so on and so forth. So, Briefly, I'd like us to just review anatomy of uh, the radial artery. And uh, it originates from the brachial artery as it bifurcates uh, in the cubital fossa. So as we all know, the cubital fossa can be delineated or uh, superiorly uh, between the, uh, so superiorly between uh, the two epicondyles. And then uh, laterally, you have the brachioradialis uh, muscle. Uh, which, ha which gives the radial artery its uh, medial border. And then immediately you have the pronatal teres, which has been cut off here because it's a, it's a superficial muscle, which gives the radial artery its lateral border. So in that's, usually, that's the border of the, of the, those are the margins or delineation of the cubital fossa. And it, that's where you find, usually find the bifurcation of the brachial artery. And the radial artery, as you can see right there, uh, descends in the forearm, takes a lateral approach, and it goes all the way down into the anatomical snuff box, where it goes into, uh, pierces the head of the first uh, dorsal interisal muscle, goes into the hand, and uh, gives up a, a, a superior uh, palmar branch, where it anastomoses with the ulnar artery. So that's just the cause of the radial artery as, as, as it descends in the, in the forearm. I like us to pay attention to this picture right here. So, right here, usually when you're having a, when you're trying to get IV access of any puncture, you probably you know trying to get one of these superficial veins of the hand. So you have the basilic veins right here. You have the cephalic veins right here. And if you pay attention to this cluster, little cluster right here, you can see 
where you have the, the radial artery and the uh, radial nerve, those tend to go deeper uh, to the cephalic artery, a uh, cephalic vein, sorry. So when you're trying to uh, get an IV axis and probably you're around, you, you can find any other veins and you're around the anatomical snuff box, you want to make sure that usually, usually the, the radial artery is deeper compared uh, to, uh, to the cephalic veins. But, you know, there have been some reports in the literature of anatomical variants where the uh, radial artery tends to be more superficial and it's superficial to the uh, extensor policies, uh, extensor policies longus as, uh, as well as the abductor longus. Abductor policies, sorry. So usually it's not that way. That's, that's not the normal variant, but it tends to be, it can be. And that's why I want to talk about this because if you just go in blindly without palpating for the radial artery, you think, oh, it's, it's just a vein. There can be some complications. And I'm going to talk about some of those. So briefly talking about our case report, uh, it was uh, routine dissection of a male cadaver, right dorsal uh, surface of the right hand. And we found a, a subcutaneous hematoma in the radial artery. And, uh, uh, and you know, we looking at a skin overlying this area. There was normal tributaries of the cephalic vein. So this this uh, uh, specimen didn't have any anatomical variation. It was normal anatomy, but still, you know, the ten, uh, there would tend to be a, uh, there was a puncture site in the radial artery, and we found some uh, hematoma and thrombosis of the radial artery. So, you know, it just tells you even without a variation, you can still, uh, you know mistake the radial artery or damage the radial artery from uh, trying to get an IV axis. So it's very, very important to check and palpate for pulses if, uh, and also try not to advance the needle too deep when doing this uh, IV axis. So this is, a, this is a picture from our case report. Uh, you can see the radial artery right there. You can see the, uh, the dorsal interosseal muscle. And you can see that's a hematoma that was found in the radial artery. So, uh, like I talked about earlier, there's been case reports of uh, superficial branches of the radial artery, and uh, it's very important that uh, we are aware of this. And I found this, this case very interesting because this patient came in for a normal procedure just to get, uh, she was in the hospital for a, little, for a while and she was gonna get uh, medication. And uh, there was uh, access, access to, there was a, a need to get into the vein. So um, they basically punctured the radial artery, thinking it was the cephalic vein, and uh, injected medication into the, into the artery. And the patient you know, went home. No one you know, uh, found out anything happened. So the patient came back five days later. She had hechemosis and uh, darkened skin over the first two digits of her hand and suggested of, of a tissue necrosis. And she had pain, paresthesia uh, around the area as well. So she underwent her arteriogram. And before this, they also found that she had a positive Hallens test because they tried to uh, compress the ulnar artery. And there was no uh, anastomosis on the radio side. So she did undergo an arteriogram and they found that there was, uh, they had mistakenly pierced the radio artery and they had mistakenly injected medication into the radio artery. And so she underwent um, thrombectomy. There was, a there was thrombosis of the radio artery and she underwent a thrombectomy and they tried to uh, repair the radio artery. But, you know, it was repaired, but this patient still ended up with, you know, uh, they had to cut off the first two digits. So it's, just one of those things that shouldn't be a complication, but it does happen. So my conclusion from this is just to ensure that we all understand that there can be a variation in the anatomy of, this, of the radial artery when it comes to the, the dorsum of the hand. And we should ensure that we uh, carefully observe, palpate for the radial artery pulse, and try not to advance and do too deep uh, when performing these procedures. And here's my clinical peer for this case, and uh, I'd like to thank everyone. Thank you very much.